I'm Rebecca Stewart, the creator of Infernal Regions. This may look like a sophisticated living room full of invaluable treasures, but we're in fact we're fathoms deep under the sea in my homemade bathysphere. It's taken me five years to make Infernal Regions, so I want to show you a little bit behind the scenes. The research, the early sketches, the giddy highs, the abyssal lows. Come, join me. I am both terrified of and fascinated by the deep sea. I love snorkeling and exploring near the surface, but the idea of going deeper than a few metres gives me the willies. The spooky anglerfish and glowing snails, weird life around volcanic vents, giant squid and other strange horrors living in total darkness under immense pressure. Ugh. In the 90s, I made a Super 8 film about amphibian, a creature of the deeps who comes to the surface to explore, then always returns to the water. It's this unknown abyssal world and the idea that things can survive down there that led me to infernal regions. What if people could adapt in freezing temperatures underwater? What if they were down there right now? Which leads us to Holt. Howard Holt was only in power in Australia for a short period of time before he disappeared in 1967 off the coast of Point Nepean in Victoria and was never seen again. It's a favourite mystery of conspiracy theorists, political hacks, and people like me who learnt how to swim at the Harold Holt Memorial Swimming Pool. On a research trip to Point Nepean to do my own sleuthing, I learnt about the rich layers of history in this relatively small area, starting with the bay filling up with water over millennia and inhabited by the Bunurong people for generations. Invasion by sealers and colonists, shipwrecks, limestone mines, a quarantine station, unexploded bombs, wallabies, and this beauty. What a place. I started drawing some of these inspirations and pasting them up in my studio. I first imagined it as a series of very large gloomy ink drawings for an exhibition. Research went on for years as the idea grew. Dying kelp forests in Tasmania, Harold Holt books at the State Library, South Korean and Japanese free divers, researching the effects of microplastics on tiny sponges and jellies and much more. Bringing together all these very different ideas, and living in a pretty dark political time, I started to write a story about a drowned Prime Minister in a polluted world who is desperate to get back to a place where his power means something. At that stage I needed some help to pull together my disparate plot points, drawings, ideas and character development. After many drafts, I took the plot outline to Paul Ash Larsen, a friend who's an experienced playwright who gave me constructive feedback that helped me enormously. We talked about using flashbacks, really exploring your characters first, and how to pull your ideas apart and rebuild them with several key points in mind. From there on, I could see my idea wasn't really developed at all. So it was back to the drawing board for me. He lent me a pile of comics and the Scott McLeod books and sent me on my way. I then rewrote my plot outline, split it into three comics, and then created what is known in the comics world as the hybrid storyboard script thingy. From there came a more formal comic script and a more developed storyboard, plotting out each panel using the script. Even then, the storyboard wasn't there yet in my head. It took several iterations, plus a lot more visual references and research to really nut out what I wanted to say. The pencil stage was next. I redid about a quarter of the pencils, as my figure drawing got unexpectedly better from all the online classes I did in lockdown. Thanks, Carl Nass. Here's my panel structure. Most of my measurements were off. Never do this. Inks took about four months. I used some dry brush, a little gouache in some, cardboard in other areas. I created some inky textures from household objects to use in the backgrounds. These were digitally composited in much later after scanning. I wanted to emulate Argentinian comic artist Alberto Breccia, who often used things like razor blades to create his panels, and also keep the looseness of Molly Crabapple's inky journalism and the confidence of Anan Radhakrishnan's figures and silhouettes. I'm not as sure if I achieved any of that, but they did inspire me nonetheless. Infernal Regions is in the final stages now, which is letters by Simon Robbins, and final layer, pre-press and getting it to the printer with the help of my sister, Emma Stewart. Of course, there are other things like packaging, postage, finite printing and the launch, but my slithering boards will do my telepathic bidding. Thank you so much to the many backers who've gotten behind Infernal Regions. 
I've been blown away with the response thus far. Absolutely. Now it's time for it to emerge into the light. See you on the surface.